Hello again, this is our Intermediate Algebra course and today we will talk about section 3.2 Functions and the challenge is on the screen. Think if you can find the answer to this challenge. If bacon and ice cream had prices affected at the same rates by inflation, what would be the price of your favorite ice cream in 2020? Uh, we have to look at this graph and understand what's happening. Uh, in 2010, the price of um, ice cream was $3.75. The price of bacon was $4.25. Then, year after year, the price is increasing. Both ice cream and bacon are becoming more and more expensive. In 2010, we know that the bacon is costing $5.10. What would be the price of the ice cream? Okay, think, uh, write down your answer. At the end of this uh, lesson, we will check the, the right answer. Section 3.2, functions. And the uh, first objective is to define what is relation domain and range. Let's see. Simple example, very simple example. We have this set of order pairs. Look, um, 4 and 9, negative 4 and 9, 2 and 3, and 10 and negative 5. This is a set of order pairs. You're going to define the domain is all the x values of the set. That means... 4, negative 4, 2, and 10. This is going to be the domain of that set. And the range is the set of all y values or the second coordinates. If this is the domain, let's write down here the range with a different color. Range is 9, 9 again, don't need to repeat, 3 and negative 5, okay? And that will be uh, important to understand and to define function. Let's think about another uh, kind of uh, relation. This is not um, uh, any kind of relation. We will have an input and an output and the input is this list of all animals. The output is the corresponding lifespan of each animal. Okay, so the polar bear, the lifespan is 20. Cow, 15. Chimpanzee, 10. If you look, each um, animal has its lifespan. Some animals have the same lifespan uh, as others like uh, the gorilla and the chimpanzee, 20. They share the same lifespan. But this is an example of a function because for each input, we will have only one output. You see only one arrow leaving the left uh, column, the input, and uh, arriving to the second column, the output, you can, we can have uh, three arrows like here. We can have two arrows. But leaving the first um, uh, column, only one arrow for each input. Okay. The main are the animals. Right? The main is like the X. We can say input is x and uh, the range is the output y, which is the lifespan. Now, a definition of function is a relation in which each first component in the order pair corresponds exactly to one second component. Again, go, go back to the, this relation here. Each animal has one and exactly one 
a lifespan doesn't have two lifespans doesn't have three lifespans only one that is uh, what a function means functions are very very important if you think in your daily life uh, you want everything to work as a function if you um, work um, uh, driving a car for example you have a function of um, the steering wheel, when the steering wheel will go to the left, you want the car to go to the left. When the steering wheel will go to the right, you want the car to go to the right. So this kind of is an example of a function. Machines or um, devices that you give one input to the device and you want uh, to know what is going to be the output in just one output. Question, is the relation 4, 9, negative 4, 9, 2, 3, 10, negative 5, also a function? Check if for each x you have only one y. We don't have any x repeated, right? Only different x's. That means, yes, it is a function. For each input, only one output. How can we identify looking at the graph on the XY plane? It's the same thing. Check for each X if there's only one Y. Example, here on letter A, we're going to have X equals negative 2. And we have Y equals 1. For negative 2, Y equals 1, right? But what about uh, for x equals 3? If x equals 3, we're going to have y equals 2. And also y equals negative 3. That means not a function. On the other graph, let's check also the same thing for each x, only one y. For each x only one y for each x we have only one y and yes on this graph of letter b we can say yes we have a function it is a function because for each x we will have only one y And example, now uh, look at uh, this equation and try to tell me if this is a function or not. Y, y equals x squared minus 2x. Is it a function? Think, if you plug in x, how many y's you will have? If you make x equals 0, y equals 0 squared minus 2 times 0, 0. If you make x equals 1, y equals 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times 1, negative 1. If you make y equals x equals 2, sorry, uh, 2 times 2, 4, 4 minus 2 times 2, 4, we're going to have also 0. You can notice that for each x, we have only one y. We can have some repeated y's. Here we have 0 and 0, but this is not a problem. So yes, it is a function. Next, um, let's try to make the same thing. Instead of guessing values for x, I will um, plug in here values for y. So let's make, for example, I'm going to think about a value here that will make our life a bit better. y equals 4. So x squared minus 4 squared equals 9. You can see that x minus 16, x squared minus 16 equals 9. And x squared equals Add 16 on both sides, then you have 25, right? And finally, you find the square root 
and you have x equals 5. Great, so x equals 5. Now, plug in, I'm thinking here about another value that might show us if um, it is a function or not. Let's plug in x equals negative 4. Negative 4. Then we have x square minus negative 4 square equals 9. x square minus negative 4 square is negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Add 16 on both sides, x square equals 25. And take the square root on both sides, x equals 5. For the same x equals 5, we have y equals 4 and y equals negative 4. Um, that kind of uh, relation, you're going to see, um, if, you, if you try to graph it, that this is um, a representation of a circle. And you're going to have lots of situations where you have, for one x, um, two values of y. That means not a function. Not a function. Okay, This is not a function because for one x, we will have two or more y's. One. Uh, a good uh, way of finding out if you have the graph is using the vertical line test. If no vertical line can be drawn so that it intersects a graph more than once, the graph is of a function. We will try to draw a vertical line crossing this la uh, uh, graph, the red graph, in more than one point. So this vertical line, just one point. This vertical line, just one point. This vertical line, just one point, right here. You see? Just one intersection. I don't see any way of drawing a vertical line that crosses this graph in two points. That means, yes, it is a function. Oops, sorry. Yes, is a function. Now the next one, same thing. Try to find a vertical line that crosses, uh, intersect the graph in two points. We can try, we can draw several vertical lines and we will realize there is no way of draw, drawing something that will make uh, intersection with the red graph in two points. So yes, it is a function. Oops. Another example. Now check this red uh, graph. This red graph uh, looks like an oval. And actually now we are able to draw vertical lines, several vertical lines. You don't need to draw like several vertical lines. If you find just one vertical line crossing the graph in two or more points, that means it's not, it's not a function. It's not a function. All linear equations, we've seen before, uh, linear equation is a function, linear equation is a function. All linear equations will be a function as long as not a vertical line, is not of the, the kind x equals to a constant. So if it's not a vertical line, it's a function. Uh, let's understand how to find the domain and the range of a function. Look at the graph. Let's say we have this uh, function represented by the blue line. The domain 
we've seen before is going to be all the axes. So you look at the x axis and the domain is all will be all the x coordinates that have um, uh, uh, at least one one point that are coordinates that uh, um, belong to the graph. Okay, so this uh, represented in red is the domain. The range, let's use light blue. We seen before is the y coordinate, right? All the y coordinates. So all the y coordinates of this uh, dark blue graph now are represented here by the light blue. This is the range. The coordinates of the domain will be between this one, two, three, four, and one, two, negative three. And the coordinates of the range will be between one, two, and one, two, three, negative four. Every point in between is um, parts, in this case here, uh, of the domain on the x-axis and on the y-axis. Every point between negative four and two is part of the range. We will have to represent using interval notation. So domain is between negative three and four. Both we have um, closed dot here, right? Is a, so is included negative three and is also included four. And the range is between negative four and two, included as well because those uh, uh, um, the limits of the graph are closed dots, bracket and bracket. That means negative four is included and two is included. We have um, the blue graph. It looks like a V. Um, if you remember the previous section, maybe this is an absolute value function, absolute value um, graph. Remember? Well, look, the graph has arrows. That means it, it keeps going all the way on this side here, all the way to, to infinity, to the right and up on the on this side all the way to infinity up and to negative infinity to the left think what is going to be the domain the domain look uh, imagine this arrow going on and on and on with no end the domain will also go to infinity so all the way to negative infinity all x coordinates and here all the way to positive infinity and what about the range now is a different situation because the graph has um, a, a break it breaks uh, kind of here is is um, we don't have any graph from here downwards right no graph at all that means the range will start from y equals negative 2 and to going up we can see the arrows go to infinity, positive infinity so the range also goes to positive infinity let's write down using interval notation domain from negative infinity to infinity and range uh, negative 2 is included, negative 2, and goes all the way up to infinity. Function notation, that's really the most difficult. I'm kidding, it's not the most difficult, the easiest uh, thing about functions. If you want to write um, to say that an equation 
is also a function. Let's say you have an equation y equals 2x plus 1. You can say that this equation is also a function. Instead of y, you're going to write down f of x equals 2x plus 1. And this is function notation. Oops. Uh, that means the 2x plus 1 is a function in x. See? A function in x. We have the de dependent variable is y, depends on x, and the independent variable, which is x. That's, I don't know if it's helpful or it's uh, just a kind of a, a warning. Do not mix up a function with multiplication. Okay, this is not multiplication. This is function of x. The f is not multiplying the x that's inside the parentheses. No, this is function. That's, that means function of f. We can find uh, the function value or evaluate a function if you make, um, if you have fx equals 4x, you want to find f of 2. This number that's inside the parentheses is x. You make x equals 2. Just plug in x equals 2. That means f of 2 equals 4 times instead of x, 2. 4 times 2, 8. This is finding the function value or evaluating a function. g of negative 3. Well, if g of x is x squared, you plug in, uh, sorry, x squared minus 2x. So you plug in instead of x, negative 3. And simplify you will find the value of this function. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, 9. Negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6. This is equals 15. Let me fix. Okay, next. On the next slide. Oh. It's the same. Given a graph, uh, you can also find or uh, evaluate the function. Let's say we have this graph here in red, and I want to find f of 5. That means f, a function, when x equals, of, uh, equals to 5. Let's find here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is x equals to 5. Now move, let's go and intersect with the function. Uh, this is kind of uh, uh, hard to, to say precisely, but let's say the intersection is right here, where y equals 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. y equals 7, okay? Now, what is f of 4? I think it's going to be easier. 4, now it's easier to identify the intersection. And we have y equals 3. f of negative 5. Find x, y, x equals negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And yes. y equals negative 1. And finally, let's find f of negative 6. Here is negative 6, right? This is negative 6. And again, it's kind of tangent. Almost, let's say, f of negative 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6, right? Negative 6.
All right, moving to the next uh, topic, graphing a linear function. You uh, maybe remember we can have the standard form of the linear function, I, uh, the, of the linear equation, ax plus by equals c. Then you can have the um, slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. If you write the slope form using e function notation, f of x equals mx plus b, right? So y is the same as f of x. Graph the function f of x equals 3x minus 2. Uh, we have the y-intercept. Remember, now I have to remember the slope-intercept form. This is b. Remember this? Slope-intercept form, b. And b is the y-intercept. Here, negative 2 is the y-intercept. And 3, the number in front of x is m, m is the slope, m equals 3, you can write 3 over 1, and this is rise over run. Draw on the graph, rise. Let's just start here from negative 2. You can run 1, and rise 3, 1, 2, Three. This is rise, and that is run. We can define the, the line, this blue line, uh, that is the graph of the function f of x equals 3x minus 2. Do you have an answer for our challenge? And if you guess it, well, we know the price of the bacon, right? The price of the bacon is right here, 5.10. The lines are parallel. That means this distance between the lines, between these two points in 2010, will be the same distance between the two points in 2020. And this can be calculated by subtracting 4.25 minus 3.75 is about 50 cents. The ice cream is 50 cents cheaper than the bacon. That means the ice cream will be $4.60 since in 2020. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to answer the, the questions in my lab math. And if you have anything that you need a better explanation, that you, uh, that you have a question about, send me an inbox message in Canvas.